Race number six at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 3.24. It's the Amelia Park Plate over 1,200 metres for the three-year-olds in replay. Let's have a look at the last start performance of Levitate. The inside trying to get into the bridle around the Elite Street, winding up for McAvoy, Sweet Azza, and Levitate behind the others. Mia Dolce, We've Got Dreams. They're having a battle royale at the 150 with We've Got Dreams. Mia Dolce, they're still clear. Downforce runs on. We've Got Dreams is lifting. We've Got Dreams. Mia Dolce, Levitate late. They've gone to it. We've Got Dreams. Levitate was certainly jumping out of the ground in the replay race. That was over 1,000 metres. His last 200 metre split was considerably faster than anything else in the race. Only got beaten by just under half a length. In another couple of strides, he wins the race. 1,200 metre suits, 56 kilos. William Pike, Simon Miller, lots to like. Levitate goes on top. From number six, uh, Laverod would be close to the best maiden in the state, if not the best maiden in the state. He's been placed in a couple of listed races back to back. The Placid Arc and then the Lestere Classic. 1,200 metres appears to be more his liking than the 1,400 metres. So I like the uh, drop back in trip here from gate number three is the main danger to the favourite. Number two is downforce. He raced in restricted room when just under a length, a drift of uh, Levitate in the replay race. Prior to that, had won two in a row. He's still a colt. They think a fair bit of him. Gets gate number one here, gets another chance. And then number four, Silken Eyes. He may well be a peg below some of his opponents here on Saturday, but he comes off a Bunbury victory uh, that has been franked by Sweet Doeman, who won at Ascot on Wednesday. See how he goes over the 1,200 metres. Top selection in race number six is number seven, Levitate, to beat six Labor Rod, two Downforce, and four Silken Eyes. Race number seven at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.03. It's the high-end jack handicap over 1,400 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the latest victory of not to be missed. On the inside, Friars Fantasia. Sir Mambo had hit the front, 300 to go, not to be missed. And Lace Vinsky bursting through between them, not to be missed. Called upon Lace Vinsky going with it. Lace Vinsky not to be missed at the 100. Lace Vinsky not to be missed on the outside. Lace Vinsky not to be missed. Head and head, they split it together. What a finish. I won't use the language that Adam Durant used in the post-race interview, but it'd be fair to say that he thought that William Pike got very impatient in the replay race, that West Speed Platinum Series final. He decided to uh, push not to be missed forward mid-race, and uh, the credits to the horse responded very, very well indeed. Adam is an absolutely outstanding judge, and he thinks this horse will develop into a railway stakes horse in 12 months' time. If he's right in that assessment, she'll be winning the 72 plus here with the 56 kilos and pike engage. Goes on top from number one, Heart Starts, who's getting pretty close, I think, now to a winning official handicap mark. I think 1,400 metres is his best trip. Comes out of the Peters, finished six behind Mississippi Delta. Prior to that, was placed behind Platoon, who ran really, really well in the railway stakes. Number eight is Crystal Valley, who I thought was excellent first up, considering what happened to her a few months ago. She almost lost her life in a training accident. Second up, up in trip to 1,400 metres. I'm hoping to see this horse continue to improve. And then number five, Avidus, should be, I think, pretty fit now. He was really, uh, really uh, hard done by in the last race. He was on the speed in what was a very fast run, 1,600 metre contest. That was two weeks ago. Winkers go on here. Back in trip, could well be in it for a long way, Avidus. Top selection in race number seven is number three, not to be missed, to be one heart starter, eight Crystal Valley and five Avidus. Race number eight at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.42. It is the main event, the Ted Van Heem Stakes. Group two race over 2,100 metres at weight for age. In replay, let's have a look at the massive run in the Kingston Town Classic of Regal Power. Clear by about three or four. KC with a run on the inside. Galo Chop, 200 to go. Here comes KC. She's winding up on the inside. Galo Chop's the leader. KC's cutting it down. Best of days runs to third. KC grabs the lead from Galo Chop. It's KC home and another one for Steve. I thought that Regal Power was clearly the run of the race in the Kingston Town Classic. He drew a wide gate, gate number 15, that meant he had to go back from that tricky 1800 metre start. Then there was a slow tempo, certainly by Group 1 standards, and it made it mathematically impossible for him to win. He had the fastest last 200 of the race. I thought after that race he'd be hard to beat in this and the Perth Cup, and I haven't changed my opinion. I think he's probably the best bet on the card. If you can get black odds, good luck to you. On top he goes. From number two, Gatting. He has won beyond 2,000 metres three times. Officially, according to the handicap rating, to the highest rated runner here. Jamie Carr comes from South Australia to ride the horse. It's just 
She's only got uh, this right on the card. I think he's obviously the main danger, but I do expect Regal Power to win. Number three, Star Exhibit, he's ticking along really nicely ahead of the Perth Cup. He'll be going for history in that event. No horse has won it more than twice. He's looking to become the first horse to win it three times. And then number six, Mississippi Delta, another horse that's building towards the Perth Cup. She'll only be third up on Saturday. She won first up in the Peters. I didn't really like that race. It was ninth in the Kingston Town Classic. Can't see her winning on Saturday, but she's building nicely towards the feature on January 4. Top selection in race number eight is number five, Regal Power, to beat two Gatting, three Star Exhibit, and six Mississippi Delta. Race number nine at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 5.20. It's the Star Struck Classic for the Phillies and Mares, a listed race over 1,600 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the previous race in this series and the run of Perfect Jewel like a butterfly. Yendel now pulls beautiful mind around the heels to set after those. Regal Moonshot right up near the rail. Followed further back Forgotten Star. Like a butterfly Snow Chino. Beautiful mind together. Beautiful mind on the outside from Like a Butterfly. Reaches the lead flying late. Perfect Jewel but Beautiful Mind wins it. I thought that Perfect Jewel showed just enough in the Jungle Dawn Classic a couple of weeks ago to suggest she still retains an interest in racing. I think 1600 metres is her best trip here. And I think at the right price, I think she offers a value betting proposition. I'm willing to give her one more chance. I know she hasn't won for 756 days, but she's a high quality mare, rated 92 here. The set weights and penalties conditions do suit these high rated mares. Goes on top from number three, Electric Light, who uh, tackles 1600 metres for the first time. It is probably quite significant that William Pike wears the, uh, the red and the gold of Andy Phelan here instead of the cerise and white of Bob Peters. But I've got a query about the 1600 metres for electric light. I do think 1200 metres in a fast run race is her best trip. Number two is Miss Lecky, who actually beat Perfect Jewel in the railway stakes, albeit only by a small margin. She has won over course and distance. It's a horse I can't ever really seem to get right, but she does go in the minors here. And then number four, Like a Butterfly, was benefited by the on-pace favours in the Jungle Dawn Classic. Map similarly on Saturday. Second up, there's no reason to think that Like a Butterfly won't run a race. Top selection in race number nine is number one, Perfect Jewel, to beat three electric lights, two Miss Lecky, and four Like a Butterfly. Race number 10 at Ascot on Saturday will jump at three minutes to six. It is the Crown Sports Bar Handicap over 2,200 metres and in replay, let's have a look at the 2,100 metre win of Sentimental Gift. The 300, two in front of Ombudsman, a, a similar margin pushed to pass. Pike going right up on the inside with Sentimental Gift and he's running on strongly. High Energy is the leader, pushed to pass, run to second. Pike's around the heels with Sentimental Gift though. He wants this Sentimental Gift, races up, grabs the lead and the last is over. Pike gets it with Sentimental Gift, scored from push to... Sentimental Gift turned the tables on British Bessie in the replay race, but uh, not a great deal went right for the Sharon Miller trained opponent in that contest. I think Sentimental Gift has proven me somewhat wrong. I think he is a horse with a fair bit of staying ability, good closing sectionals, not only last time out, but in the race in which he was beaten by British Bessie. And I think given the, the concerns a little bit about the Sharon Miller trained horse, Sentimental Gift goes on top, Pike in the last. Number six is British Bessie, worth another chance certainly. Had to pass a vet exam prior to the race that we saw two weeks ago and came back with some abrasions as well. Number two is Push to Pass, who split British Bessie and Sentimental Gift in that replay race, has drawn another low gate, the veteran. He's nine years of age, having his 80th start on Saturday. Gate number three, jump from gate number four in the replay race. And then number one, Brothers Keeper. He raced against his usual pattern in the replay race after jumping from a wide gate. Ended up settling 11th of 14. Normally is on speed, including them when he won the York Cup with a mid-race move. Top selection in race number 10 is number three, Sentimental Gift. To beat six British Bessie, two push to pass and one Brothers Keeper. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Ascot card. Going in race number four, first up, number two, don't fuss to Frank, that stage man form from the winter. And then in race number eight, the Ted Van Heem Stakes, best bet on the card is number five, Regal Power to win in the Cerise of White. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can log onto our website or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.